Jean Shay, and thank you for joining me. This week I'm going to make a tea tree and activated charcoal facial soap. Now I started planning this soap back in December of 2017 when I sat down and worked out what properties I wanted in a facial bar of soap. I knew I wanted to put in activated charcoal and I knew I wanted tea tree in it as well. I also wanted oils that were going to be good for the face and produce a nice soft creamy lather. Now all my other soap recipes that I use, they do produce a really nice lathering conditioning bar of soap that's not drying on the skin, but they produce big bubbles and I wanted little bubbles in my facial soap. So I developed a recipe, popped it into soap calc and everything, all those figures kind of fell into range and I thought we'll make it up and see how it goes. So in the first week of January 2018 I made this loaf of soap up and I honestly thought it was not going to be a saleable bar of soap once it was made. It was a very soft bar of soap which wasn't surprising considering only 28% of my recipe is hard oil which is coconut oil but it does have olive oil and rice bran oil in it which is meant to add hardening properties as well. Um, it was very, very soft and it had an almost transparent sort of look to it. So I was very concerned that this um, bar of soap was not going to be saleable in terms of giving a long lasting bar of soap. But other than that, there was nothing wrong with it. So I popped it onto the curing rack and thought we'd be able to use it within the home. About four to six weeks later, I checked up on this bar of soap and it was very soft. You picked it up and if you squished at it, it kind of bounced. Um, so I thought this is just not right, I'll have to go back to the drawing board and add some hard oils into the recipe and just have a bit of a think about what to put in there. So this never happened, I got busy and I never got a chance to review the recipe. But about um, another six weeks later, so three months after making this loaf of soap, I needed some soap in the bathroom. So I thought I'll pick up a bar of that one because I can't sell it, it's too soft. And much to my delight, three months after making this loaf of soap, it had gone nice and hard. So it didn't have that same bouncy feeling that I'd had at, at that four to six week mark. So I thought, well, we'll take it into the bathroom and see how it, um, how it performs. And it produced a really nice, creamy, um, low bubble sort of lather and felt really nice on the skin. It was nice and soft, creamy, left the skin feeling moisturized as well. So I was really, really happy that it worked. And this is an example of one of the bars of soap that came out of the loaf. And I was so happy with how, it's, um, how it came up. I've used a few of these bars now and I've given them to people to try as well and everyone has said that it's really nice. So I thought, well, I'll stick to that same recipe, but I will remember it needs a much longer cure time. The only thing I'm really not happy with about this bar of soap is the size of it. I just felt for a facial bar, this is too big and cumbersome to use on the face, even as it kind of um, wore away through use it still kept that same sort of big size it just got thinner so when we make it this time I'm going to make it in a loaf mold but then I'm going to cut that bar of soap differently so we end up with something that's just a little bit narrower and maybe a little bit longer so a similar sort of weight in um, in the bar of soap but a little bit more manageable to be using on the face so let's go and make the tea tree inactivated charcoal soap so in my big bucket here, I have my chosen oils. I have, as mentioned, coconut oil, olive oil, rice bran oil, camellia oil, and castor oil. Camellia oil, which comes from off the tea bush, is meant to be very good for facial skin. And both that and the rice bran oil produce a really silky, creamy lather, which is why both of those oils are in here. And then I add castor oil to all of my soap um, recipes as castor oil is meant to really help hold the lather that builds when you use the soap. Um, in my other bucket here I have my lye water and usually I would add in some tussar silk into the lye water to add silkiness to the bar but because I have both that rice bran and camellia oil which produces a nice silky lather and we're adding kaolin clay into it I didn't feel I needed to add tussar silk as well. So I'm going to do as always and pour my lye water into my oils, give it a blend up and then I'm going to split it out so we can add the, um, the extra additives to each of the batches before pouring into our soap mould. We have our 
batter split out into the two batches and for my smaller one in this bowl here I have about half a tablespoon of white Australian clay or kaolin clay which I dissolved into some water or added into some water. I made this mixture up at the same time that I set my soaping oil so I could make sure that the clay had hydrated into that water which makes it easier to blend into the soap batter. So I'll pour that one in there and then also to the white set or the white kaolin clay I have just in here I have a tablespoon of tea tree leaf powder and I'm adding that in for exfoliation so I'll pop that one in there and I'll just give that a bit of a, a stir up And then into my bigger bucket I have some activated charcoal and I'm going to start with adding a tablespoon in here. Now I started my recipe off with a kilo of oils and I'm working on using a tablespoon per 500 grams of oil but because I've split my batter in half there should only be about 500 grams in here so I'm going to give this one a blitz up with the stick blender to get that dispersed So in this jar here I have a blend of essential oils and I have rosemary, eucalyptus and tea tree oil in here. And I've picked oils which are all meant to have very good um, skin benefits. So I'm just going to pop those in there like that. Give them a mix up and then we'll start pouring. So the mould I'm using today, this is a mould that I made when I first started soap making. Um, I got myself the little bits of timber and I made myself up the mould and I was lining it with the paper. Now the only thing I decided I didn't like about this mould wasn't so much the lining of it because I actually find it quite therapeutic to line moulds with paper. That may sound really odd to those that absolutely hate it but it was so, sort of satisfying when I lined up the mould but what did bother me was throwing the paper out after making the the soaps and that's why I changed to a mould with a silicon liner but I still come back to this mould occasionally when I want to make smaller batches of soap or when I'm doing a test of fragrances and things like that so I thought well for this one I will make my facial soap in here and I've worked out what size to cut my bars to as well. Now with that original um, loaf of soap that I did, I basically poured it so that I had black on one side and white on the other. But as I said, I don't like the size of that bar and I'm going to be cutting these bars of soap um, differently. So I thought, well, we'll just mix these colours through, do a little bit of a stripe and you'll see why when it comes to cutting um, cutting this one. So I'm going to finish scraping out my buckets and come back in just a moment. Okay so we are now done with this loaf of soap. I'm not going to do too much more. I want a nice flat top on this because of the way I'm going to cut it. I am going to give it a bit of a spray with some um, rubbing alcohol because when I first made this soap I did experience soda ash on it and I am going to cover it as well. I have these wooden things here and these are actually lids off the, um, the silicon moulds I usually use but because I don't gel my soaps I never use the lids and if I do a high top they don't fit anyway but because this has got the activated charcoal in I wanted to really get that black to pop and shine so I'm going to try and get this one to gel overnight. Um, something I did fail to mention at the start is in my lye water I did add in some sodium lactate to hopefully harden this one up a little bit quicker than my first batch I made and the other thing I did to try and combat how soft that first batch was when I did that I was still learning a lot about soap making and I used 38% um, water as a percentage of oils um, whereas this time I've come back down to 30% so hopefully 
I'll be able to come back in 24 hours later and get this one cut. So I'll see you again soon. Okay, so I am back to unmold and cut this loaf of soap. It's been about 30 to 36 hours. My husband had the day off work yesterday and today, but I decided yesterday we'd go and do a bit of a shopping trip and we would then have a movie night and things like that. So I have left this a little bit longer, which means it should be nice and firmly set up for me. So we get that bit of paper out of there. Okay. Alright, so that's now all unmolded, and you can see that the black has really popped on that overnight. So I'm really pleased with how that one has set up. I will go and get the cutter, and we'll get this cut up into bars. Right, so the cutter I'm going to use today is my single bar cutter which I got from Pure Delights um, Soap Cutters here in Australia and it's all handmade. To get the correct size for this bar I'm going to take off the end plate here. I want my bars to be seven and a half centimetres long which takes me straight up to this little screw on here. So we'll just flip that back and pop the bar on lining it up just to the edge of the screw there so I get my seven and a half centimeters and I'll cut it is still quite soft because of all those soft oils but it's not tacky at all which is great so here is the inside so I'll get these other couple cut up and then I'm going to cut these blocks into smaller pieces which will hopefully be a lot more manageable for the face cut up what I want to do is cut them in half and then I'm going to cut them in half again this way so I'll just go and get myself all set up and measured on this one to do now that I've got them to this size is now I'm going to chop them in half this way so we get a nice little um, rectangular piece of soap. So that will be the end piece of soap that we end up with. I'll just pop one of these onto the scale. They're going, at the moment, they weigh about 100 grams each, so I suspect that by the time they have fully cured out, they'll come down to about 90 grams, and that, I think, is just a really nice size to be able to lather up and use on your face. So I'm going to get these other pieces all cut up, and then this piece that I had on the end, I may be able to get just a couple more um, smaller pieces and if not they'll be chopped up and used as samples in any future orders. So I hope you have enjoyed watching me make this activated charcoal and tea tree soap and I should have it loaded up onto both Etsy and my website in about I'd say six weeks just because of how soft these oils are. If you have enjoyed watching me make this video, please leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And until next time, I'll have a great week.